to kick off our coverage of the Goldman Sachs Energy and Clean Tech Conference in Miami Beach. Brian? Tyler Matheson, thank you very much. Yes, we are joined by Mary Powell. She is the CEO of Sunrun, also a former utility executive. So she comes at it from both sides. Uh, Mary, we chatted here last year. It's good to see you again. Oh, it's great to see you, so too. So they, they came in on the interview. I want to talk about <laughs> solar and storage, but they came in on the interview uh, with, you know, talking about big moves in stocks. And mm -hmm. how frustrating is it to be a CEO of a company? You're just trying to build out solar storage capacity, et cetera, when every five basis point move in, in the 10-year yield <laughs> sends your stock up or down. 10%. Why is that? I mean, we're, you know, Brian, we're up, what, over 60% over the last three months. And the fact that the Fed has indicated that, you know, likely the rate hikes are over. And in fact, we could be looking at some decreases in this coming year. Yeah. It is actually a significant tailwind for us. You know, basically lower our, rates are yeah, a tailwind. Yeah, for sure. Lower cost of capital. You know, when we look at the future, we've looked at a cost of capital. We've structured it around a higher cost of capital. So we're actually doing much better already just in the last few months with what has happened with rates and with the outlook for 24. So but we're it, feeling. Did you understand my point? This, you know, the, yeah. The, the 10 year yield goes down a quarter percent your stock goes up 50 percent it's it's there's a lot of things that are happening that are not based i'm assuming on the pure fundamentals of sunrun's business 100 percent. and what we stay focused on at sunrun are the pure fundamentals of sunrun's business and that's why we've been very clear with our investors that we are about generating cash and that's what we're going to be doing in 2024 and that we've already guided to generating 200 to 500 million dollars in cash generation as we exit 24. So we're feeling really good going into 24. We also have, you know, you have hardware costs coming down. You have the ITC adders flowing in, the Inflation Reduction what, what Act. What is that? What is the... The Inflation yeah. Reduction Act adders, you know, the incentives for low and moderate income households across America. Those are starting to flow into the economy in 2024. So we see a lot of, a lot of great things happening. But most important, Brian, like when we spoke a year ago, I said we were going to make 2023 the year of storage. And guess what? We did. <laughs> we did. We actually had over 100 percent growth in our storage megawatt hours over the last year. So I am so excited about our position. 100 percent growth. Yes. So a yeah, in, 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 in storage. storage. Because yes. I, people I'm sure a lot of people think of you primarily as a residential storage, a residential solar company. We're going to put solar panels on a roof, the conversion more to battery storage mm -hmm. as well as distributed energy, almost a, a power wall type. Not that I'm dropping Tesla, I just want to be clear, <laughs> but almost that type of, you're shifting into that d direction. In fact, one of your programs is called Shift. Yes, exactly. Amazing how I just worked well, that yes, in Yes, you did, you did. <laughs> and in fact, that's what we talked about, is there was a policy shift in California last year that we really leveraged. That's how we led our interview yes, last year, it by was, the way. It was it not was. a good thing for you. Exactly. But it really, what we did is we used the year, we used the change that was happening to build a much stronger platform for growing as a storage company. So we called it the year of storage. We led a storage first strategy. At the beginning of the year, your typical Sunrun customer was attaching storage at about 15%. So 15% of the customers were mm -hmm. also buying storage. You know, at our last earnings call, I said we're already up to 33% and we were selling at a 40%, which is so significant because not is it only more value for the customer, it provides a much more valuable energy experience, but it's way more valuable for our investors and for the company in the context of our bottom line. I know, I know my, line. My, my colleague Kelly in chilly, in frigid Englewood <laughs> Cliffs, New Jersey has, has got a... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, guys. It's 70 something degrees down here. It's not terrible. <laughs> Kelly? Yeah, no, no, we're, we're, we're chilly in more ways than one. Mary, the company has been uh, accused by short seller Carson Block of overstating your subscriber numbers by 20% based on what you tell investors versus the EIA. Can you explain that discrepancy and, uh, and answer his claim as well that you are overclaiming tax credits as a result? Yeah, so we love, I mean, we've always welcomed healthy debate questions, and we've responded to every single inquiry with detailed responses. And what I can tell you is we work actively with the EIA. We go over in depth how we report, and we've had them confirm that we're doing things the right way. So, you know, again, Muddy Waters has it wrong. We've responded in detail, but we always welcome any and all questions, and we've, we've been in that situation 
ever since we started Sun Run, where you're always going to have people asking and wondering what is going on, why you're doing things the way you do. So right. again, we've responded. They have it wrong. EIA has confirmed the way we're doing it.